This video will be an introduction to matrices and we will cover some of the concepts listed here on the screen. A matrix is a set of numbers arranged in rows and columns. For example, this is matrix A that I just made up off the top of my head. It has two rows and three columns. Here's another matrix that I just made up off the top of my head. I'm calling it matrix B. It has three rows, one, two, three, and it also has three columns. One column, two columns, three columns. So notice that rows, when I talk about rows, rows go like this. All right, rows are horizontal. When I talk about columns, I'm talking about numbers that are in vertical lines like this. When we talk about the size of a matrix or the dimensions of a matrix, we talk about the number of rows by the number of columns. And we put this X, and when you read the X, you say by. So this is rows by columns. So here's matrix C that I just made up off the top of my head. How many rows does it have? How many columns does it have? Notice that matrix C has three rows. One, two, three. And it has two columns. One, two. So matrix C we refer to as a three by two matrix. The first number is always how many rows, and the second number always says how many columns, rows by columns. So when we talk about the size, this is what we mean. Pop quiz, what is the size of matrix D? Or we could say, what are the dimensions of matrix D? Think about it. Hopefully you were thinking to yourself, well, this is a two by four matrix because it has two rows, one, two, and it has four columns, one, two, three, four. So the dimensions are two by four, always rows by columns. So when we talk about the size, we're talking about this. Now let's talk about an element of a matrix. This matrix has six elements. An element of a matrix is just the individual numbers that make up the matrix. Um, we have a certain way of referring to each element based on what row it's in and what column it's in. So um, notice that we always use capital letters to represent matrices. So far I've referred to matrix A, B, C, and D. Notice I'm using capital letters. Uh, as I refer to a specific element, I'm going to use a lowercase letter. And since uh, this is matrix A, once I start talking about the elements of A, I'm going to use a lowercase a. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put two numbers here. So um, what if I say 2, 3? What I need you to understand is the 2 represents the row location of the element. And the three represents the column location of the element. So it follows the same order as when we talked about the size or dimensions of a matrix. Row by column, row by column. Get it in your brain like that. Row by column, row by column. Always row by column. So when we look at this element, a, and then we have the subscripts 2, 3. 2 is the row, uh, and 3 is the column. So, which element is in the second row and the third column? Well, the second row is here, and the third column is here. So, element 2, 3 is the number 4. All right, try this. Pop quiz. What is element... Um, let's see. What's element 1, 2? Okay, hopefully you were thinking negative 5 because 1, 2 means row 1, column 2. This is row 1, 
This is column two. That's the number negative five. That's how elements work. Let's do one backwards before we move on. The, the element zero, what would be the label for element zero? How would I identify it? All right, element zero is in the second row and the first column. So I would call it A21 because it's in the second row and the first column. So A21 is equal to zero. Let's talk about row matrices. A row matrix is a matrix with only one row. For example, consider matrix E that I'm about to make up off the top of my head. It has to be a matrix that only has one row. So for example, negative three, two, four, one. This would be a row matrix because it only has one row. Uh, what would be the dimensions of this matrix while we're at it? Well, um, the dimensions are always row by column. So there's one row and there are four columns. So by the way, this is a one by four matrix. Okay, so um, you could probably guess what a column matrix is based on what I, uh, how I defined a row matrix. Um, and you'd be right, a column matrix is a matrix with only one column. For example, matrix F here is a column matrix because it only has one column. What are the dimensions of this matrix? Well, dimensions go in the order row by column. So this has three rows and of course one column because it's a column matrix. So the dimensions of this matrix will be three by one. So if you're dealing with a row matrix, it's always going to have dimensions one by something. And if you're dealing with a column matrix, it's always going to be something by one. By the way, as long as we're talking about vocabulary, we speak of one matrix and we speak of two matrices. So please understand that the word matrix is singular and the word matrices is the plural form of matrix. So one matrix, two or more matrices. What is a square matrix? A matrix with the same number of rows and columns, thus forming a square. Um, let's see, what letter am I on? G. Okay, so matrix G that I'm about to make up off the top of my head is a square matrix. Um, let's say I have uh, negative four, two, six, and nine. All right, this would be a square matrix because it has dimensions two by two. All right, two rows and two columns. All right, can you picture a, another square matrix? Looking back in the video, matrix B was a square matrix. Can you see it now? Matrix B has three rows and three columns. Matrix B was a three by three matrix. It is a square matrix. Let's talk about the identity matrix. An identity matrix is a square matrix with the number one along the diagonal and zero everywhere else as shown here. Now, there will be an identity matrix for every square matrix. So um, this example that I have here is a three by three matrix, um, but I could easily make an identity matrix that was uh, two by two, for example. So for a two by two matrix, the identity matrix would look like this, one, zero, zero, one. Um, oh, you want to see a four by four matrix? You just want me to go crazy with it? I can do that. Uh, for a four by four matrix, the identity matrix would be like this. One, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. I could do this all night, people. I think you get it, though. Let's talk about a transposed matrix. 
uh, when you transpose a matrix, um, all of the rows become columns, and all of the columns become rows. So look, here's matrix A. Now I'm going to write a transpose, all right, the transpose of uh, matrix A. And uh, to do that, all of the rows will become columns, and all of the columns will become rows. Um, so look, think about the dimensions. What are the dimensions of matrix A? Notice it has two rows and three columns. So matrix A is a two by three matrix. So if the rows become columns and the columns become rows, um, a transpose, instead of being a two by three matrix, it will be a three by two matrix. So I should have a matrix that has three rows and two columns. Okay, so um, this row is going to become a column. So I will have a column of 3, negative 5, and 2. This row, the second row, will become the second column instead. So the second column will be 0, 1, and 4. So this would be a transpose. Notice that every column, like 3, 0, has now become a row. Let's talk briefly about adding and subtracting matrices. Adding and subtracting matrices is only possible if the dimensions of both matrices are the same. For example, yes, you can add this matrix with this matrix because this is a two by three matrix, two rows, three columns, and this is also a two by three matrix, two rows, three columns. And by the way, um, the easy way that you add two matrices is you simply add the corresponding elements, just like you would think. All right, so I would add the two and the four, I will add the 1 and the 0. I will add the 0 and the 1. I will add the 3 and the negative 6. I will add the 5 and the 3. And I will add the negative 2 and the 8. And this would be the sum of these two vectors. Notice you add a 2 by 3 matrix with a 2 by 3 matrix, you get a 2 by 3 matrix. No, you cannot add this matrix and this matrix. Look how similar they are. The first matrix is absolutely the same. The second matrix is the transpose of the first matrix. All right, I'm practicing that vocabulary. Um, let's talk about transpose again. Notice how row one became column one. Row two became column two. That's the transpose. But that's enough, that minor change is enough that you cannot add these because the dimensions are no longer the same. This is a two by three matrix, uh, but this is a three by two matrix. You cannot add a two by three matrix with a three by two matrix. The, the dimensions have to be exactly the same. So this would be not possible. Now, let's talk about multiplying a matrix by a scalar. In this context, a scalar just means a real number. So here I have matrix A. So what if I wanted to take matrix A and multiply it by three? So that would mean I would have three times matrix A, which I'll just recopy real quick. Tedious. Vocabulary okay, words. Word. So this three is the scalar that I'm talking about. And uh, it's going to turn out just like you might think. If I'm going to multiply this matrix by 3, guess what? I just wind up multiplying each element by 3. So that's going to turn out to be 9, negative 15, 6, 0, 3, 12. So this is the matrix 3A. Okay, now let's talk about multiplying a matrix by another matrix. 
It is only possible if the number of columns, oh, I left out a letter. That was embarrassing. The number of columns of the first matrix equals the number of rows of the second matrix. Wait, what am I saying? So just looking at dimensions for a second. Let's say the first matrix was a two by three matrix. And I wanted to multiply it by another matrix that was a three by four matrix. This would be okay. This would be a yes. I could do this uh, because the inner dimensions are the same. The number of columns of the first matrix has to equal the number of rows of the second matrix. But if you wrote them side by side, the inner dimensions would have to match. So um, could I multiply a two by three matrix um, times another two by three matrix? Would that be okay? Uh, well, this would be a big fat no, because the inner dimensions here are not the same. They have to be the same in order to multiply them. And here the, I have uh, three columns for the first matrix, but only two rows. So this is a no. All right, consider these two matrices, for example. Um, would it be possible for me to multiply matrix A times matrix G. Would that be possible? Um, well, let's see. Matrix A has two rows and three columns. So matrix A is a two by three matrix. Matrix G has two rows and two columns. So matrix G is a two by two matrix. Notice that the inner dimensions do not match. So this would be not possible. Okay, these numbers right here would have to be the same. On the other hand, could I multiply matrix G times matrix A? Would that be possible? Well, again, matrix G is a two by two matrix, while matrix A is a two by three matrix. So look, the inner dimensions are the same. So yes, this would be possible. And uh, the net result is going to be a two by three matrix. And uh, the place where I'm getting the net result from is um, the outer dimensions. Okay, I know that the product that I will get when I multiply G times A is gonna have two rows, all right, because of this two right here. And I know that it will have three columns because of this three right here. So the outer dimensions tell you what the dimensions of your final answer will be after you do the multiplication. So that is really important uh, because you really want to set up um, the correct dimensions for your answer before you even get started. So if I know that my final answer is going to be a two by three matrix, all right, two rows, three columns, then I'm going to set up for that sort of like this. All right, I'm gonna put these lines in here just to help you see what I'm doing. All right, you don't necessarily have to draw the lines, but I'm just doing this to organize my work. Now here's how you actually do it. So now, uh, since we know that our answer will have two rows and three columns, so our answer will have this shape to it. Um, so the first element here, all right, this is element one, one. All right, it, uh, it has the, uh, we're talking about the first row and the first column. So I'm gonna do my calculations over here. If I want to find element one, one, okay? This is row one, column one, all right? That's where I am in my answer. I'm in row one and column one. So what I do is I take row one of the first matrix and I multiply it times column one of the second matrix. So I'm gonna take row one from matrix G 
Okay, so I've got uh, negative four, two. And yes, even though that's a row, I'm gonna go ahead and write it vertically, um, and you'll see why in a minute. So I took row one of the first matrix, and I'm going to take column one of the second matrix, all right? I'm saying first and second because I'm doing G times A. So, so uh, for this problem, G is first and A is second. So row one, column one. Row one of the first matrix, column one of the second matrix. So there's row one of the first matrix, and here comes column one of the second matrix. And I wrote them both vertical so that I can easily multiply them together. Um, so that's going to give me uh, negative 12 and 0. And then I'm going to add those numbers together, and I get negative 12. So guess what? That is the value of this element. All right, so element 1, 1 is the number negative 12. Okay, my computer's working really slow today. Maybe I'll change colors so you can kind of follow me as I go around. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and do element uh, one, two. Okay, this would be element one, two right here. Remember, these numbers represent row and column. So this is row one, column two. That's the, this location is in row one, column two. Um, but uh, when I do my calculations, this row one, column two, tells me, um, first of all, let me erase my old circles here, because now I'm going to circle row one from the first matrix and column two of the second matrix. All right, so this is what I'm doing for this problem. So um, row one of the first matrix, so that's going to be negative four and two, and then column two of the second matrix, so negative five, one. And uh, if I multiply those together, I'm going to get positive 20 and two, and if I add those together, I get 22. And that is the element that goes right here. Okay, I'm going to run out of space in a minute, uh, but I'm going to keep going for now. Okay, so this element right here, I am in the first row and I'm in the third column. So that's what I'm about to calculate. So I'm going to find element 1, 3. So I'm going to need the first row of the first matrix and the third column of the second matrix. All right, row 1, column 3. So row 1 of the first matrix column three of the second matrix. All right, so here I go. Okay, so row one, that's negative four, two. And then column three is two and four. So that's gonna give us negative eight and positive eight, add them together, you get zero. So that's gonna be this element right here. Okay, let's keep going. I think I can squeeze in one more over here. Okay, so this would be element 2, 1, because now I'm in the second row and the first column. So now I'm about to do element 2, 1.
All right, so for element two, one, that means I need row two and column one. Row two of the first matrix, column one of the second matrix. So that's six, nine, and three, zero. I'm quite certain. So if I multiply this, that's going to give me 18 and 0. If I add them up, I get 18. So that is going to be this element. Okay, two more to go. I know this is a long process, but we've come this far, so I just want to follow through and finish the problem. Okay, so this element is element 2, 2, because I'm in the second row, and I am in the second column, so that makes it element 2, 2. Okay, so I'm going to put this right here. So I'm going to find element 2, 2. So that means I need row two and column two. Row two of the first matrix, column two of the second matrix. So that's six, nine, and negative five, one. Whoops. Ignore that little dash there. I don't know why I did that. Um, so if I multiply these together, that'll give me negative 30 and 9. Then if I add those together, I'm going to get negative 21. Yeah, so this element right here, we have now discovered, is negative 21. Okay, one more, uno mas. This is element 2, 3, because I'm in row 2, column 3. So element 2, 3, what's up? So this is row 2, column 3. So that means I'm going to need row 2 of the first matrix. Hold on, let me get ready. Wasn't ready. Okay, again I say row two, column three. Row two of the first matrix and column three of the second matrix. All right, first, second. So six, nine, and two, four. Okay, so that's six, nine, and that is two, four. So that's going to give us. 12 and 36. Put them together and you get 48. So that is the final element. So that is how you multiply one matrix by another matrix. Um, as we go along, we will streamline this process a little bit so that there's um, not so much work scattered all over the place. We're going to organize this a little bit better. Um, but for our first time through, I wanted just to spread out and make it absolutely clear what I was doing. Hey guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click over here to watch the next video and click over here to subscribe. That way you'll get every new video delivered right to your home screen.